right, everyone. In the first video, we really stayed at a high level talking about Power Automate as a whole. But in this video, we're now going to jump into a little bit to understand, one, the Power Automate portal here, as well as the Power Automate editor and some of the basics and, and fundamentals of working with data inside the editor. So you'll, you'll see here that by going to make.powerautomate.com, you'll land at the portal. And based on your licensing, you should be able to see most of this information at least, but it stays pretty consistent either which way. So here on the left, I'll, I'll just jump to that because all of this information in the middle is really just kind of different content about various things. So let's just stay focused on navigating through it. So here on the left-hand side, you'll see the main navigation. We have approvals. We'll talk about that in lesson two as we get deeper into the different types of communication you can do. So I'll leave that off for now. But then we have my flows, so let's just jump in here a little bit. You'll see here there's a few different pieces that I'll talk to. So cloud flows, of course, this is all of your flows that you've built for yourself. So these aren't ones that you've shared. They like to make it a little confusing so that once you share a flow, even if you've shared it with someone else, that technically then will move to the shared with me section here. And so even though this seems like it's only flows that have been shared with you, it also includes flows that you have shared with others. So these are ones that I haven't shared with anyone else that are here. Across the top, you'll see new flow. So we could create from template. And in the next video, I'll show you some of the quick templates I really like to work with. And I, I think help break down Power Automate and the different ways you can work with it. You could also import this from Visio, which is really handy. And then as well, we have all of the different types of flows that we kind of talked about at a high level in the last video, which is from automated cloud flows, instant schedule, describe to design it, or desktop flows as well. We can also move flows in between environments, either individually using the legacy package, or we can move them as solutions, which is highly recommended. So we'll start off without any solutions involved in this, but I'll show you in some of the later lessons how important it is to one, build your, your flows and apps always within a solution, and why that is. So other pieces here, really, if you did want to start working with Power Automate for desktop, this is where you would be building RPA flows. Those would be connecting to the machine functionality, right? If it's running on your computer, interacting with Excel files, things of that sort. Or you could install an on-premise gateway. This is if you had something like on-prem SQL Server, you could install this so that your cloud instance here would be able to communicate with that server. Like I said, templates we're going to jump into next. You can also create custom connectors as well as other individual connectors that you can add, but we won't get into this until a little bit later just because there's so many different pieces of Power Automate here that it'll be hard to try and cover all of them at once. So for now, we're just going to go to create, and this is that same list that we saw on my flows, and we're just going to choose a instant cloud flow now to get started. This is the little wizard that pops up, so you can give it a name, you can choose a trigger. This can be handy at times, I just tend to skip it usually. And so what we are in here is now our Power Automate Flow Editor. So we're going to give this a name, and you can see up here, right next to the back button, this just kind of takes it back, right? Nothing too fancy. I'm going to call this My First Flow. And then you can see we have some of the basic features, save, flow checker, this will let you know if there's errors or anything like that. You can also undo, redo, which works 70% of the time. But coming here to the main area of it, this is where we start jumping into that logic chain I was showing you in the last video, right? And so the first aspect of a flow is always going to be the trigger. So you can search triggers either by the connector. So various trigger or various connectors have various triggers. So for SharePoint, you can see when an item is created versus when an item is created or modified versus when a file is created, right? You can see where there's different triggers that you can kind of think of based on what system you're kind of pointing at. But in this case, we're just going to keep this simple and say manually trigger a flow. All right, so now new step. So now that we have the trigger, now you can see that this switches to actions. And so now we have to start laying out the different actions that'll follow in sequence after this. We're not going to do anything fancy now, but we are going to search for send an email. And we're just going to pick the Office 365 Outlook, send an email, V2, maybe it's at V3 eventually, but it's always the same thing. All right, so now that we have our action set up, 
there are various nuances to what we could talk about here, but again, I'll save that for lesson two when we deep dive talking about the different types of communication actions and logic that you can do. So one thing that's handy about the Outlook connector, if I type in storm, you can see that this will show up. This is actually from Azure AD that it's querying from. So this is how it's kind of just pulling from Outlook and all right, whoever storm has in his Outlook, he can search here as well. Subject. I am just going to put a test email subject and you can see this dynamic content. Let's uh, switch down to body first, but so on body, I have the dynamic content and you can see this pop up here. This is something you'll start to get very familiar with work, very familiar working with because this is how you start to data bind some of the properties that are coming from actions or the trigger above and flowing down into actions below. So this passing of information is super valuable and is what really makes Power Automate so powerful. So in this case, I'm just going to type in a simple, this is the date of today. <laughs> and here you can see that because this is a manual trigger, it just kind of provides some various things such as you can have it provide the geo coordinates. We're just gonna go with the date property here show advanced options, you can just see this is where we start to get into some of these other features. So CCing, BCCing, we could also add attachments in here. These are all things we'll dive into a little later, but in just, I'm going to go ahead and save. Alrighty. So I want to run this flow just to show you the basics of it. So I could go back to the details page and run it from there, but the editor also has this very handy feature up here on the right to actually test this flow directly. So I could run it off of existing runs if there were any, but since this is my first time, I'm just going to select manually and test. And so since this is my first time running this, I want to call out something really important here about how flow works with the connectors that we've been discussing. And so since this is send an email action from Outlook, how does this Outlook know, one, who to send it to? Well, that's just programmed right in the two property, right? But who's actually sending this email at the end of the day? And so this is varying for any type of connector, but in this case, since we're using Office 365 Outlook, what this is actually doing is allowing Outlook to essentially grant this flow access under my account. So this is something that's called delegated permissions because if I click on permissions here, essentially if I hit continue, I'm allowing this flow to do these following actions only as designs per se, that can also always be malicious, but in this case, we're just using it to simply send an email. So it's very important to be aware of though because this is actually sending an email from my account. So let me just cancel this really fast. And how I show you where that's happening is if you go to your action and you go to the ellipsis here, the menu, you can see that my connections, this is actually using my account. So if someone else was to log into this flow and they came in here and clicked add new connection, we could actually change this flow to run from someone else's account. So I'm gonna go back to testing this manually I'll hit continue here because I do want to let the flow do this and I'll hit run flow. All right. And you can see that this did run and show more here. Normal. It did go to storm. Let me pull up that email very quickly. And you can see here that I have the email coming through. So this is the date of today. You'll notice that it did actually come from me and sent to me. So again, that is all part of that delegated part where it is actually sending from whatever the connection reference is set to. So now just to explain this here, since we do have a successful flow run, this is another part of why Power Automate is so valuable in terms of a workflow tool, because it also gives you the live step-by-step -step kind of preview of what actually happened. Did any of these actions fail? What were the properties? So in this case, like I was showing you, right? Storm, test email. You can see everything right here from the flow run. So very handy, especially as you have more and more complicated flows. This helps so much from a triage standpoint to really understand what's happening so that you can resolve it. So let me just go back. And now you'll see that this actually brings us to the flow detail page. 
And so here is where you can see some of the overarching information, who the owner is, when it was created, things of that sort. Also super important is the plan, whether it's premium or not. In this case, it just runs off of who the current user is. You can also see the connection. So I was showing you that on the other screen, right from the menu, from the editor. In this case, you could kind of see it at a high level. Again, what we're allowing or what actions are, are running under at, running under through this. If we did want to share with owners, this is where we can allow other users to edit and also share the flow. This is different though from run only users where if we wanted someone to just be able to run this flow but not change it, we could still share this with them. Now what's interesting there, if you think about it, since this is delegated, if we were to share this with run only users, they could then in theory run this flow and they would be sending an email from my storm at Kumo Partners account. We do have to kind of think about how that allows it because at the end of the day, that is something that's very important because we would be granting access to that. So you can see here when I change this, we could still prompt them to provide by run only user, but we could also say use this connection, which would be doing exactly what I talked about. Users with run only access will not control or have access, but they would still be able to run it at the end of the day. All right, so that is our first flow. We'll jump into some of the templates in the next video.